you know, Drake essentially referenced, you know, mm -hmm. basically redid Khaled. the lyrics. Let's say Khaled. Okay, Khaled, but it was mm -hmm. Drake actually rapping. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Khaled song. You're right. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Fuck me for free. Um, you well, know, we, I had we, a song called Don't Fuck for Free way back in the day. Yeah. Drake's song was called For Free. Yeah. But then he sampled Blow the Whistle and yeah. said some of the lines from Blow the Whistle. And it's like, I, I don't know if his For Free title... Oh, was based on your... I don't even know if he knows I had a song called Don't Fuck for Free. But maybe he did because Drake... He, he's, he's, um, he's, a, he's a historian. He did one thing that I thought was pretty clever. And I say that I've been rapping for 225,000 hours. And he said 223,000 hours. So you know what that is, right? Mm -mm. He's too short. 2,000 short, too short. That's, that's the huh. 223,000, 225,000. Okay. I'm like, why did he say 223? He changed that one line because too short. Too short. 2,000 short, man. Clever. Clever. At least that's how I took it. You know, if you look at all the lyrics you've ever done, because, you know, I, I've interviewed some artists, and, we, and I've referenced some of the stuff that they've, they've said before, mm -hmm. and they've literally asked me to take that part out of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about who, who it was uh, off camera. But, like, you had, I forgot what song it was, but you had a song that said, uh, Nancy Reagan came mm -hmm. to my house. Gave me a blowjob. Keep going. She licked my dick up and down like it was corn on the cob. Right. And, and, was, and, and Ronald Reagan was president at that time. She was the time. first lady when I said that. She was that. the first lady. Yeah. You were talking about the first lady sucking your dick like corn on the cob. It was all shock value. It was like um, Ronald Reagan was taking away programs and shit in the inner city. He was like cleaning house on, on Jimmy Carter, you know, and fucking... Um, it, it was, it was kind of Trump-ish right now. Hmm. This, the sentiment we were kind of. I, I, I see what you're saying. In the '80s with yeah, Reagan, we were, it was yeah. it was kind of feeling a little Trumpish. Yeah, you're right. We call it the Reagan era, Reaganomics, all this shit, and it yeah. was like shit changed in the streets, man. It changed, and you know, we're just jabbing back a little bit. Yeah, that's all. So, was there any pushback over those lyrics or lyrics like that? For some reason, I remember this: the Reverend Calvin Butt steamrolling. Cassette yeah. tapes and shit. I remember Two Live Crew and the Ghetto Boys in court. I remember. Yeah, I just interviewed Willie D about that. The people who's, who were at the stores, the clerks, they were getting arrested for selling the music if they tried to sell the music. They used to keep our music behind the counter. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, all of that, that labeling, you know, with the, the whole, when you see the parental advisory sticker, you know, you can think. You know, two live crew and ghetto boys for that. NWA too. You know, you can thank us <laughs> and Ice T and Too Short. I remember the FBI contact and NWA, and mm -hmm. I don't know what was was uh no what was uh what I don't know why I was I was not a part of any of that. Something that I did either my nonchalant demeanor or the fact that uh, I really didn't have like radio hits that were like threatening. My, all my radio songs are like the positive songs. Yeah. Like somehow they missed me. Like I, when Kelvin Butts was running over CDs, cassettes, I didn't see a two short cassette down there. Like I'm like, do they know? Remember Tipper Gore, Tipper Gore was, yeah. was had a list of names. I was never on that list. Uh, C. Dolores Tucker. They never, none of them never, ever knew about you. You managed short. to just stay under the radar of all that. Huh, interesting. I don't know. <laughs>